Hello lads, I'm checking in from Mirkwood in Middle Earth with some profound knowledge. Okay, perhaps not really, but I wanted to talk a bit about Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. And before I begin to completely bash Harry Potter, no, I'm joking, I, I will not. Just a bit. I will admit that when I was a child I immensely enjoyed the books. So thank you very much for many hours of joy, J.K. Rowling. I never really liked the films though, but that's not the primary point of the discussion at hand. Basically, you can say that you have two different kind of guys. You have guys who prefer Lord of the Rings, such as myself. And I view Lord of the Rings as a very important work. Sort of like the Iliad and Odyssey were for the Greeks back in the day. For modern Westerners we have Lord of the Rings. And I'm very happy that I grew up with it and um, you know, came of age when the films came out, etc. Anyway, before I begin to elaborate on the films or the books, I would like to briefly perhaps introduce you, if you aren't already familiar, with the concept of slave morality that good old Friedrich Nietzsche talks about. He talks about slave morality and master morality, and they are opposite to each other. And master morality is the true morality, the morality I subscribe to, which I realize, which I understand is the true good. And I will talk about this when I make my How I Got Red Pilled video because it has very much to do with it. Slave morality is the modern morality we have in the West and that is basically the more downtrodden you are, the, the gooder you are, the more good you are, the more downtrodden you are. So you have someone who's weak, he's good, he's poor, he's good, he's infirm, he's good, he's unhealthy, he's good, he's obese, he's good, he is He's a victim, he's good. And also, in slave morality, if you have someone who is beautiful, he's bad. Strong, bad. Wealthy, bad. Healthy, bad. Popular, bad. In the majority, bad. And of course, if you are a minority, you're good. And if we look on Harry Potter from the perspective of slave morality, it makes sense that he is a hero because he starts off his journey basically being as downtrodden as you can be. Lives with his mother's sister's family, lives under the stairs in a very not all too spacious accommodation, so to speak. Um, so he has that moral advantage for the people who subscribe to for the people who subscribe to slave morality. Um, and all of a sudden he gets magical powers that he uses for good. And this sort of slave morality, it doesn't only appear in Harry Potter, it's quite common. If you look at a Hollywood film depicting a an American high school drama, you have the weak, nerdy guy, he's the good guy. And then you have the athletic jock, he's the bad guy, and the weak nerd always gets the girl because she understands how good he is and how mean the athletic jock is. And I can say this, and again I will explain this in more detail in my red pilling video, but the opposite is true. The athletic jock is the nice guy, the downtrodden weak nerd is the bad guy. I can say this with seven years experience in the Immaterium, I can say this to be true. It's not, it's the downtrodden that is the bad guy. It's not the well-adjusted guy who's the bad guy. If you doubt me, you might come to the same enlightenment someday. You have a similar thing in Spider-Man. You're a nerdy, frail, weak guy, suddenly gets magical powers. And here's the thing, magical powers aren't real. So therefore, in a self-improvement perspective, these films are quite silly. And then you say, oh, isn't Lord of the Rings or Batman silly? No, they aren't, because they don't contain the same sort of superpowers. Frodo, the main hero, or Sam, the main heroes of Lord of the Rings, they are just hobbits, but they're 
go after it anyway to the best of their abilities. They use friendship, loyalty, love for their homeland. They use these things as superpowers instead, which it can be. You know, loyalty and friendship, super important. So a reason I like Lord of the Rings more than from a philosophical or just a regular self-improvement perspective is that Harry Potter is someone special. He's a chosen individual. He can do a lot of things because of his magic powers. And most guys aren't special. They don't have any superpowers they can call upon. But most guys can become heroes if they subscribe to certain ideals, such as the ideals of the Fellowship of the Ring. The ideals of Frodo and Sam, you know, they fight for their homeland because they don't want to see the Shire being overrun by, you know, orcs and and whatnot. They're extremely loyal to each other as well. The entire fellowship, you know, they have that sense of brotherhood. And as Bronze Age Pervert points out all the time, you know, brotherhood is what needs to be formed. I talk about it in my book as well, Menerbunds. Many guys talk about Mannerbunds. That's the way forward. You know, you have this intense friendship between men and you go out on a quest together to save the world. And I mean, Lord of the Rings, it is a quite good metaphor for what is going on in the West. You know, we don't have a... We don't have any epic pitched battles or sieges. But still, we see our homelands being threatened and we do what we can do and all guys you know you can believe that you are weak and not so powerful but you can still achieve heroism by at least trying to do something such as Frodo and Sam and that's what makes them more heroic and more admirable rather than Harry Potter who you know have this uh, who has these superpowers. Then of course in terms of aesthetics and everything it's cooler with uh, you know, glorious elves and uh, Rohan etc. But uh, that's not the main point of this video. The main point is just it's a bit silly to subscribe to a slave morality. It's a bit silly to for guys to live downtrodden and hope for something to happen. And we can talk about this on a larger scale as well. You know, you have a really bad position in life and instead of trying to improve that position, you're just hoping for things to take a turn for the worse so that your time will be to stay on top. If you aren't actively trying to stay on top now, what do you think your chances are when the time of chaos comes? You need to be strong now so you can be strong in perhaps a power vacuum. So instead of being like Harry Potter, you know, being downtrodden in life, hoping for some salvation, you should be like Sam and Frodo. You know, it doesn't matter if the whole world is against you and you fight against much more powerful forces. Still have to face them head on and uh, get after it. That's the life affirming attitude. That's the glorious pill. It's not the black pill where you just give up and think, oh, the world is so mean to me. You know, the world might be mean, just as it is in Lord of the Rings, but then you have to fight back. So anyway, that was just a little forest log rambling. I wanted to have my forest walk and I thought to elaborate on these things. Of course, much more can be said about both of Harry Potter and uh, Lord of the Rings, but main point looking at it from a self-improvement uh, perspective, which, you know, I want to have the focus on this channel to be self-improvement is um, how you approach adversity. Do you approach it in a high thumos, life-affirming manner, as you know, it's being taught in Lord of the Rings? Or will you wait for a miracle to happen so that you'll have superpowers and can get back at the world? So anyway, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day. XXO, boom! Lastly, I would like to recommend the YouTube channel Asha Logos. It was a good friend who encouraged me to send some subscribers his way. So if you haven't already checked out his channel, head over there and tell him I sent you. And tell him I sent you on the behest of a good friend. So now, thank you for watching. XOXO, boom.